Yes, um, you know, very, very intriguing image. Uh, lots of story. It's got all the elements. Uh, unfortunately, like it's really got a lot of good elements. Um, on the right, the crop on the right is just this. It's not balanced. If you just take care of that and have that balance, um, I, I would have scored. I actually did score that, but I now, then I would have changed it. Oh, yeah, I gave it an eight. <clears throat> Very happy with that. Um, I love the, the fact that the tree's beautifully white. It's centred perfectly. And to see that greenery around it, when I first saw it, um, I thought the top half was actually trees and the bottom half grass. And even though it's shot from above, it actually looks like it's been shot side on like as if the tree was growing out of the earth so i think it's very very well seen and, and fantastic work with her Does anyone else want to challenge a team? Oh, no, no. Who got the team? We're going up. Oh, Shane. Do you want to challenge? Okay, you lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I see such magic in this image. We've got this amazing aerial, of course, and you've got this two-dimensional caricature of the landscape as well. We are really clever here, people. This is just really, really beautiful. Also, the um, tonal qualities throughout both sides of the image have got this um, innate understanding and feel of um, like Van Gogh's painting, like, almost like the swirly kind of thing of Van Gogh. To me, it's just really magic. Um, I think that... It can't go any higher than a 10, and I think that's where it should be. I think that you guys are not seeing it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I was a little bit um, uh, weak need on this one. I should have gone to 10 straight away. Um, it is a landscape within a landscape. It's, it's a caricature. It is so many things. I mean, um, it works purely on the... the, the uh, the topography as an illustration of actually what it is, dendritic, dendritic flows into the kind of riverbed there, but then it has this beautiful cartoon nature about it and quirky um, fine art feel. So, yeah, I think we, we're doing it an injustice by... What was it, an eight? Yep. Okay. Um, I don't see what you see, unfortunately. Um, like, when it came around, I... I, I feel um, I've seen an image like this before, so it didn't really appear new to me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really kind of lost a little why you all think it's called distinction. Um, but I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can yeah, ditto to that. Um, <clears throat> the one bit I do like about it is that the line running through it with what looks, you know, from a distance, you could think that that was a road and you know the trees like a line of trees running that road um i'm keen to hear more uh i will come up um but yeah i'm not sure if a, an actual 10 would be where it sits so yeah i think an actual 10 is exactly where it should sit um <laughs> <clears throat> i think we have the we have the range to work with and we shouldn't be afraid of 
getting right up there when it is asking for it. And this is, um, we've, we've used a lot of words already and it's hard because then we start having a competition of words. Um, but even at the core feeling of a cave painting on a wall, that timeless art style where that black line that you saw, Mark, that could be a road is also a streak of, um, of ochre from thousands of years ago that streaks across the page and it still feels, it feels so natural and so textural and so timeless and the dimension from two-dimensional illustrative to this three-dimensional, are we looking sideways, are we looking top down, we could do both. Um, it's a journey, it, it ticks all the boxes and I don't think, I, I don't want to compare to anything else but this is something we haven't seen a lot of this year. And it's um, a really, really powerful image, and it's subtle, but no less powerful as any kind of um, painting of the last 4,000 years. Uh, thank you, everyone. I appreciate those comments. Um, yeah, I just, straight away, the, the, the multiple dimensions of the possibilities in this image are what has made it exceptional in my in my world, um, the way I've judged it. So I think that's that's what it needs to be, to be a 10 for me. Uh, yeah, beautiful image. Congratulations to the photographer. I'm loving the textual content down, especially in the foreground here. Uh, colour palette is absolutely amazing. Uh, I think that um, uh, you've captured a really beautiful and um, emotive piece here. Yeah, a interesting image with some interesting features. Um, I'm not particularly drawn to the color palette. It, it seems a little bit uh, unauthentic. Um, so maybe just play around a bit more for the photographer, or just do what you do and maybe maybe a score. Thank you. 
Sure. Yes, uh, well done to the photographer. Uh, it's a very uh, well done image. Uh, it's, it's a great vision. I think um, probably the one thing it lets it down is it's just a little bit too symmetrical and it's crying out to have a bit more tension in the way it's cropped. Um, it could have been probably cropped a little bit tighter on the right hand side to my eye. Um, but overall, still very well done. Yeah, I, I'll be quick because um, <laughs> I, I don't ever have support. I've got this in a gold and it's very difficult to talk about images like this because they just, they floor you, but what can I tell you that's not already there? Except that it's a beautiful palette. The colours are deliberate but so organic. It's, um, it's the most macro version of a landscape I can get because I'm getting skin tones and cell tones and a very, very human palette in the centre here. And it, the colour play keeps me journeying around and around this um, central stream forever. And then landing in that golden kind of lung heart thing just in the, in the corner there, it's just, it's subtle but flawless in the execution so I don't know there's nothing to fault um, and I really think it belongs in the gold category and um, we must talk about it <laughs> okay um, <clears throat> I really I mean I definitely think it's of award worthy image that uh, the blues for me I'm finding just a little too intense given the rest of the the color palette and i can see how someone might say they like that because of the more pastel nature of the rest of the image um for, but for to me it's just a, a little bit too distracting Yes, absolutely stunning image. I must admit, I was sort of hovering on the nine here. Uh, so I'm glad you challenged this, uh, Nathan. I particularly like, you know, um, the containment with the, the top of the image, how it doesn't sort of let you sort of fall out of the, the image. And it's just absolutely captured beautifully. Um, yeah, I love the color palette. I was hovering uh, around nine two and just settled for eight, um, just because I um, for a nine I thought I really would have liked to see so there's another element in there that symbolizes something that that draws me in emotionally, like say in, in the middle. If that would have happened. I would have been straight there, but I think I, I'm gonna come up anyhow because I mean it's beautiful, it's, it's exquisite in the color palette and. It's also very nicely balanced. Yes, I scored this originally eight, um, and I will be going up. I, th I think um, we can't interpret this print, you might say, too literally. I think here is an opportunity um, seen by the photographer to create something out of something which was arguably a little bit mundane. And I think they've just done a really, really excellent job of, um, you might say, manipulating colour and texture. Um, you know, the craft in post-production here, I think, is uh, exquisite. Um, so, yeah, I think we're, we, we should really just give a little bit of a kick along. All right, it sounds like we're, we're in a pretty good consensus for gold. Um, the beauty of art pure art is that it uh, bypasses cognitive function and um, we feel something first and if we try too hard to understand it and put cognition around it it might not work because this isn't really its purpose it's the feels of um, what this color palette is working with that really work and uh, I think those intense blues if we were shooting a stalk of blue, then we'd want some colour separate. We want some separation between the sharp thing and the background, and it kind of does that. 
um, it gives us this dimensionality that doesn't feel like just this flat surface. There's distance now. There's a the colours are quite deliberate. There's an earth and there's a sky and there's a there's a um, there's a greeny nature piece as well and. I just, uh, it, it just really feels like a brush stroke of creation. There's all these arty things going on, but we'd fall short if we try to really understand it and scientificize it. But um, as it stands, I really, um, I would love to see this in gold. I think this image probably needs um, a little bit more around it uh, as a starting point, a little bit more of what the landscape and the context of uh, what's happening here would help. Also, I, th I believe uh, that uh, covering some of this landscape is some water, and what water can do is soften um, the definition of what's underneath. and. It, Unfortunately, we're just not reading the water and surface um, very well, which gives it a general overall softness, uh, which I think is detracting. Um, so, yeah, a little bit more space around it, a little bit more context. Can I, Terry, could you say something? Uh, you said around it, around crop, I think, so on the right side, around crop, that would look, um, I think that, that would be really cool for this image. Yes, certainly um, some interesting uh, colours here with the uh, onset of that smoke almost uh, ready to descend. I, I just don't know what the photographer could have done to, you know, sort of bring it up into the award category. So I don't know what I'm offering here, um, but it's a cool shot. Yeah, it's a, a very exquisite color palette and the movement at the bottom, as in it's not movement or it looks like movement, like water splashing is, is also very intriguing, plus the obvious um, to enhance the image, I think. So this, the left side is brighter than the right side, and it's kind of leading the eye out of the image. If you control that, 
and put my emphasis in the middle, I think you, you're going to have a strong opinion. Um, I really enjoyed this image. Uh, I love the colour palette, uh, the greens and the reds, you know, the complementary colours or opposing colours for those two. And I really enjoy the uh, the man-made fighting against nature with the structure just jutting it out into the ocean there. So, yeah, really nice image. I'd like to um, compliment the photographer for trying a few different things that we haven't seen before. Number one, um, to render what is a scene that would have a lot of colour in it as a, as a black and white. Um, and also the, the choice of uh, equipment, you know, to use a tilt shift lens, um, kind of a little bit of shine flag on it to throw the background and foreground, you know, selective focus. Um, so why, why did it probably only get a six and not something higher after that? Um, and I think it just comes down to the overall um, tonality, the quality of the ton tonality. If that had been just um, enhanced a little, I think it would have scored, um, you know, maybe seven or eight even. Um, but yeah, congratulations for showing us something different. Well done. Yeah, lovely. Um, great concept. I kind of saw a bit of a cross in there too, which, you know, I mean, is this a symmetry from above the way I see it? Um, it's also really interestingly framed with trees, another symbol of life. Um, yeah, congr congratulations to the photographer. Um, Yeah, I love this um, illustrative Sean Tan depiction of algae making shadow puppets against the, against the wall and making themselves look all sharp and spiny when they're all soft and warm and green. To improve it, uh, it's just a little bit heavy around some of the edges, a little bit muddy in pieces um, and a little bit too sharp in other pieces. So it's just like when it prints, it would probably come out really, really interesting. So there's a lot of potential in this. Yes, beautiful graphic and uh, interesting design um, and great colour palette too. So, um, yeah, it's just a lovely image. But um, I don't know that, you know, what we could do to bring it up into a, into a silver award um, because it's just a good, solid, professional picture. Yeah. <laughs> really? Eight? Okay. Um, I, we, we talk about images having a wow factor and the, you know, like that immediate feeling you get when you see the image for the first time. 
And that's exactly what I got when I saw this. The, the colour palette, that streak of green and that streak of brown going up with the branches. It looks so much like a tree on the top of a hill. And then I get closer to the image. And when I get closer, the textures all around it, um, it almost looks like it's printed on a canvas and it's a digital print. Um, so I'd really implore you to please come up for, for that. Sorry. Yeah, great. I was I was in the silver range. Uh, that's a seven. Look, there's a lot of space that isn't a wow factor for me, and the wow is everything you saw: the streak of green and the detail and the golden tree thing that's not a tree. Um, but everything else, all of the stuff up on the top right, and it's. I, I get that the tree could be a lonely tree, but at the same time, it's just, I'm, I'm losing my wow. I'm getting distracted by the nothingness in the edges. And this thing needs to be really, really big, or I need to get close enough that I can really enjoy all of the textures, the aurora australis or whatever in the, next to the tree, all of that stuff. So I'm lost a bit in this gaping lack of wow on the edge, but I can't argue with the wows that you see. Yeah, it was up right up there with WOW for me at number nine. Uh, yeah, and just not even the fact that it's a tree. It looks like a leaf as well. There's so many different shapes and textures and waves almost. Uh, so it transcends the ordinary and is right up there in the extraordinary. Yeah, I see your sailing ship. Um, <laughs> in my imagination, it is. Um, Oh, but and and I, I scored silver too, and what held me off is the same. What Nathan had held Nathan off this orange, this this sort of yellow brownish big space at the top. That if that would have been more like neutral, I think I, I definitely would have gone higher in this, straight away. Um, so that just kind of it looks a bit muddy, and 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 then the texture that Mark really likes for me. That's you know, it, 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 I know it's not over sharpened, but it sort of reminds me of that a little bit. Um, so, so those are the, the things that help me back. And, and I'm really not sure if I want to go to gold with that, all that color on the right that I, actually doesn't speak to me. Um, but Greg still has something to say. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah, Johannes, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Uh, I, look, I saw the wow. I went, wow. But then I went, oh. And it's when your eye travels around the rest of the image and... As important as that tree or sailing boat or whatever it is, it still has to live in that environment. And that environment um, has been selected by the photographer to be purposely put there. And it's all these other things, which a few of us have already mentioned, that unfortunately should not have been there. Um, so I scored it an eight. I think it's absolutely an award print. Um, but f I couldn't go to a really high score when there are so many things which are distracting me. Um, all fantastic comments, and I, I, I get everything that you're coming, where you're coming from. Uh, that space on the right-hand side for me is just a nice. I see it as a nice negative space, and you know we we know exactly what we should be looking at. Um, like I said, it looks to be like it's on a hill, so everything underneath it, there's movement, texture, and that at the top is looks like a sky, you know, to me as a sky. Um, as much as I, you know, I'd love to see it come up into a gold, uh, but yeah, I appreciate all your comments. So, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs>
condition augmented by the water supply jots out in the distance. The image was created or, or created on Yuwara country. This image scored a seven, a silver award. Uh, a worthy silver, I believe, um, and uh, well done uh, to the photographer. Um, again, this image for me just falls into the category of, again, I'd like to see a little bit more elbow room for it, a little bit more what's around there, um, the little dendronic, dendritic flows that, which have been cut off, you know, the large ones and that. Um, I want to see kind of where they start. That gives me more of a, an idea of, of uh, the landscape, and, and I think it would also... Um, there's a little bit of tension in that image which I don't think is working for it and it's simply because we're not seeing, um, you might say, the top of the head almost. Uh, technically very, very difficult to do this in a moving aircraft at 200 and something knots, was it? Or kilometres an hour. Oh, an hour. Uh, so, yeah, a little over 100 knots. Um, so, probably the thing which has left it as a seven, was it? Yeah. And not brought it up into a high score is that... Um, Possibly there's some information there which is just not required. And I think that uh, the, a lot of that bottom area, I can understand why you'd want to put it in, but all the technical beauty is running through the middle and slight top, probably just above the stadium there. And if it was a long, skinny panorama with all this beautiful technical stuff going on, um, I'm, I believe this would have scored much higher. So, number one, well done to the photographer. Um, you've really jumped over some huge technical uh, hurdles here. Um, but having done that, start put your creative hat on and just work out how you're going to entice the viewer. And don't give them anything uh, to, to be lost in. His beautiful colour palette and um, it's just such a uh, well-caught professional image. I don't know that it's offering up anything new that we haven't seen before in this style of image though. Uh, so that's, you know, that's where it sits just under that, that silver but certainly a solid, beautiful image. Um, lots of lovely detail in there. Uh, I can see what the photographer was going for. Tried like 
at that time of day you, try, you, know, you get the shadows uh, that almost make the shadows look like the animal and the white is not the animal. Um, but I think this could have worked at a better time of day. I don't think it's translated, that part has translated well. So at a different time of day, maybe an earlier morning or a late afternoon light would, would make it a lot nicer. Yeah, two out of five tens. This shouldn't be, it won't won't be too hard, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll let us all talk because the more we talk, the higher this will go. Anyway, it's um, it's beautiful, it's fetal, it's cute until we get close, and then there's these blood splatters that make it real, and it almost hurts. It's flawless. It's it's something we have barely seen before ever in terms of the construction of an aerial image relatively untouched. <laughs> um, this is a portal through to a monochrome image but wrapped in this rich colour. These blues and reds are so symbolic of many symbols. Um, there's <laughs> the, the layers of just artwork around the edge is kind of, it's just magic. The lighting is so subtle. The reds are visceral. Um, there's so much in here, but I, I, I can talk more, but I'd love to let you guys just share your thoughts as well. It's a magic image. Mm, yeah, it is, it is absolutely stunning. You're quite right. Um, yeah, there's not too much you can fault about it, really, is there? <laughs> yeah, so some beautiful, beautiful layers and, and shapes. Yeah, interesting to keep looking at it and hearing what the others have got to say. Yeah, and <laughs> um, when when this came up, the the very first thing that popped into my head was "Whoa, Black Betty, Bam <laughs> Um The the tones that are through that, uh, what let's say the background of the image, are just beautiful. Um, I was so tinkering on whether to go ten, nine, or a ten, and I did go nine. Uh, I'm starting to regret that now. I love the red. Uh, it was the top part of the red in the right-hand corner that sort of fell a little, felt a little bit flat to me compared to how dynamic it is at the bottom. So I think that's why I stopped it from being a 10, but let's keep going and see what we can do. Well, what can you say about this? This is absolutely stunning stuff. We haven't really seen too often, if ever, in uh, aerials, but that exquisite palette of the reds and the blues and just enough space around it to bring your eye right to where it's all happening in the middle. Uh, all I can say is that, yeah, I got it a nine, I'm going up to a 10. <clears throat> yeah, I scored this a 10 straight off the bat. Um, I don't care what it is, <laughs> it is just yeah. exquisite. Mm -hmm. And you don't need any explanation. Mm -hmm. No, it just smacks you in the face. So, yeah, I just encourage everyone else to have a rethink. I think we're all there, but um, I'm not sure if every point counts in this, but please definitely rethink whether this just sits on a solid 10. Um, Mark, if there's, a, if there's a vague area of that splatter of kind of rusty blood ochre, um, you'll see it in print and I think that'll be resolved for you anyway. Um, but it's beautiful and I think it's a really pretty much a perfect image for us. Yeah, thank you.
Um, I really enjoyed this. I like the, the, the symmetrical look of it, you know, split down the middle. Uh, I would ask the photographer, have a play with your colours, and if you could bring those reds into more of a brown tone. The vertical crop works, and it's just reminding me of a, a giraffe's neck. So I think if you, if you played with your colours to get it that close, then I think it would be a lot better award.